So welcome back. I'll actually draw some strategic group maps out with you right here on the board. And I figured I'd probably do two industries that everybody knows quite a bit about. I figured we'd do like groceries and maybe car or vehicles. So in this video, let's do groceries. And in the second video, I'll do vehicles. So first thing you want to do when you uh, look at your strategic group uh, map is draw the axis. Now, you can put a variety of things on your axes, and having different axes will give you uh, very, very different strategic group maps. So, again, you don't have to do it, but I really like GATC as a way to figure out what axes I like. So those of you that did not see my segmentation videos, GATC is Geography, Application, Technology, and Clients. That's how I like to do it. So for groceries, I would think that geographic stuff would be very relevant. And maybe clients. And we can probably slip the application in based on our understanding of key success factors. Now I'm just doing this kind of on the fly to illustrate the process. When you actually do it, you'll be looking at all the firms uh, within the industry, within the subsegment of the industry. Um, and analyzing the key success factors and everything like that. But you know, for groceries, I think it should be pretty easy. So geography, maybe we'll say, we'll put a plus and a minus here. And so we would say under geography, maybe like on the minus side, we talk about local firms, or local regional chains, and then up at the top, we put international. Now we talk about clients. We might say wealthy clients versus more price sensible clients. Okay. So price sensitive and wealthy. So maybe we think of which grocery chain would be the largest in the world. Oh, and it's all, I forgot to mention, it's important to define the reality under study. You know, we're talking about, you know, international grocery stores, and that's what we're going to talk about. We won't talk too much about um, uh, maybe other kinds of retailers, like uh, clothing, or uh, we, we, we might not talk about those kinds of things, right? So we'll stick to international grocery chains. Of course, we can throw some substitutes in here while we're in it. So international and price sensitive, of course, the first one that comes to mind is Walmart. Their symbol is WMT. Okay. So they're international and they're price sensitive. Hmm. There might be somebody else that would be uh, a direct competitor with them, right? Internationally renowned and also price sensitive. Amazon. Amazon and Walmart are probably in a similar strategic group. Then we might also look at some other kinds of firms. Maybe those that are international, but a little bit more expensive. Think of Carrefour. That's a French grocery chain, and internationally it's the second largest retail in the world. And it competes with Walmart quite a bit, right? Um, Walmart and Carrefour, I can actually, well, until Amazon has come along, Carrefour is still considers Walmart their biggest threat, whereas Walmart focuses more on Amazon, which is kind of interesting. And then we might say that um, Target is a little less international and a little less for the price sensitive, but I almost would put it in the same category as Carrefour, and their stock symbol is T. Um, again, because they, the store has kind of a similar feeling. And then you might have some local uh, grocery stores like Whole Foods that are, kind of target more of a, a wealthier clientele. Can't think of what their stock symbol is off the top of my head. Okay. So Whole Foods would be in a, in a certain kind of category. Um, you might have some local kind of in between on price. You might think of like Kroger, Food Lion. Schnucks, uh, 
I don't remember if they're still in, in business, but Cub Foods. Okay. So those might be one. And then you could go to international and also extremely price sensitive. I forgot to mention. Ooh. Here's another very dangerous competitor for both Walmart and Amazon, and they don't talk about it too much. But it's international and it's extremely price sensitive. Um, we'll put them a little bit lower on the international side. But you've got Aldi, um, Spar, Lidl, and Dia. These are all European discounters, right? Although Aldi is kind of slowly moving up the chain, right? So Aldi kind of competes in a European market, but then they're also an international because they're here in the States. Okay? Um, and then you might consider things that aren't exactly groceries. I mean, we already talked about Amazon, but there might be things like uh, a farmer's market. That's local and very price sensitive. People's personal gardens. You know, we're looking again at people, people buying food. People's personal gardens. Um, cooperatives, food co food co-ops. We've also got wholesalers like Costco, uh, Metro. That's the German equivalent of a Costco. I won't put Sam's Club in here because they're part of Walmart. Well, I think that's pretty, pretty, pretty good right now. So, what you want to do now? We've kind of put them on here, and notice the the, the ones I'm talking about. They all kind of have similar key success factors, right? Walmart, Amazon. You know, what are they looking at? They're looking at low prices, international distribution, and convenience, right? So we kind of put them in the same strategic group. We might call these. I don't know. You, you need, but you need to come up with a name. So you might say international retail, international food retail. For Costco and Metro, you might say international wholesalers. For Carrefour and Target, you might put them in a group of international quality purveyors. And again, I put quality on here because the Target and uh, Carrefour are different than Walmart because they focus on quality. I mean, if you go to Carrefour, it's actually a pretty fancy shopping experience. Uh, compare that to Walmart. You know, Carrefour is very expensive. Walmart, you it's, you pay less because everything's under one roof, whereas with Carrefour, um, you pay more because it's under one roof. You're paying for the convenience of it, so the, the goods are very high quality. Um, you know, might have a wine merchant walk you through the wine selections. I mean, there's just a lot. It's a very different thing. They have a fish market. It's, it's a little different. In many ways, it's kind of like an international version. The quality is kind of like a Whole Foods, but it's international, and it's the size of a Walmart. Of course, there would probably be some other groups like Whole Foods, but I can't think of any off the top of my head. I'm sure uh, if you guys can think of any, feel free to put it in the comments. So you might have kind of uh, maybe call them hipster groceries, right? We can look at Kroger, Food Lion, so that'd be regional discounters. You can look at these locals and call them maybe alternative foods. And you can look at all the Lidl, Spar, and Dia, and I would actually draw them over twice. So I'd have international discounters, or maybe small international. Small sized. International discount, and I want to emphasize the small size. Those of you, uh, some of my viewers may not have ever seen an Aldi, a Lidl, a Spar, a Dia. 
Um, they're really, really small um, stores. They're probably not more than 2,000 square feet of a store. And you only buy very, very basic things like lettuce, milk, you know, the idea behind Aldi and, the, and these other German discounters, except the Spanish, but uh, they're, they're all kind of the same in that um, it's only things that the customer can use on a daily basis. You don't do your monthly shopping at Aldi. And extremely cheap price and very basic service. So they all kind of look the same. But then I, okay, so we've got, we've got this up here. So what we see are a few things here that are interesting. And I would almost put, I'd almost have Aldi straddle both groups both groups up here. So Aldi in some way is an international food retailer because it's all over Europe and parts of the US but then it also follows a small format and so if you put it in there you see an interesting thing is that Aldi may wind up becoming direct competition to Walmart and Amazon right Aldi, I mean Walmart tried to compete with Aldi a few years ago in Germany and they got shredded by Aldi, Lidl, Spar and Dia. They had no chance I mean, yes, Walmart is ruthless with logistics, but these German firms and DIA, you know, Walmart was way out of its depth. So as Aldi is starting to spread across America, they may become a significant threat to Walmart. Because Aldi is so small, you know, they're not a huge place like Walmart, they can go to more um, urban areas, you know, areas where people can walk to the grocery and buy just their daily needs, right? Walmarts are usually kind of outside the city, got to drive to get there. I know Aldi's done very well in Detroit, for example, where... Uh, a lot of people have difficulty with access to cars, and so they can walk to Aldi and get their groceries, whereas they wouldn't have a way to get groceries at all if they went to Walmart. Another thing that you see is there's not a lot of people in this kind of what I call the hipster grocery category of Whole Foods, right? And so, in some ways, this makes Whole Foods ripe for acquisition, which, of course, as you know, is exactly what happened recently. Amazon went in, and they bought Whole Foods. So now they're competing in the international um, food retailer, but then they're also competing in this kind of pseudo-local uh, wealthy market too. And so they're able to compete in an area where Walmart and Aldi cannot. So maybe that will generate some additional competitive advantage. But you can see that when you draw it out visually here, right? So it makes you ask yourself, well, what would maybe someone like Car for Target do? Do you think maybe they could shift over into farmers markets and gardens and food co-ops? Maybe you could recommend a Carrefour to do that, right? Or maybe um, Carrefour could try to get into this um, regional uh, discounter market. Or maybe Target could too. Or maybe Carrefour could even shift over to like a wholesale version. You know, Walmart did that too, right? Walmart has Sam's Club because there's not a lot of players in this sphere. So then they kind of shifted over. So they are an international food retailer or international food discounter, but they're also an international wholesaler too because of Sam's Club. So these boundaries, you know, they can be a little blurry, but you can see uh, justifications for entering a variety of different industries. Of course, we still won't have a lot of international quality purveyors, but maybe Amazon's acquiring of Whole Foods could shift them up in there and Possibly Amazon could compete in three segments at the same time. That could give them a, a real monopoly over the food industry. But that's the kind of stuff you see when you draw this out. Great. So our next video, we will talk about vehicles. Um, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, and by the way, if I were to switch these segmentation axes up to go from instead of geography to maybe clients, I'd have a very different map. If I wanted to talk about maybe technology and um, applications, you know, applications being um, what do customers do when they go to the grocery store? Do they do just the daily buying like they do at Aldi or they do the full service shopping like at Walmart um, versus technology? You might have Amazon its own thing all by itself because it's, you know, it's the biggest online retailer. So your map could look very different. And my recommendation to you is to draw two or three different maps out to get a full picture. So in our next video, we will talk about uh, vehicles. Looking forward to seeing you there.